Good morning. It's Thursday, October 17th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Confusion and Value of a Witness. Our scriptures, Acts chapter 17. So Paul, standing before the council, addressed them as follows. Men of Athens, I notice that you're very religious in every way. For as I was walking along, I saw your many shrines. And one of your altars has this inscription on it, To an unknown God. This God, whom you worship without knowing, is the one I'm telling you about. He's the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he's Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples, and human hands can't serve his needs, for he has no needs. He himself gives life and breath to everything, and he satisfies every need. From one man he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and exist. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. And since this is true, we shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen from gold or silver or stone. God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times, but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. For he has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed, and he proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. When they heard Paul speak about the resurrection of the dead, some laughed in contempt, but others said, We want to hear more about this later. That ended Paul's discussion with them, but some joined him and became believers. Among them were Dionysus, a member of the council, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. It's no secret that Paul was an unusual person. It's been said that wherever he went, he started either a revival or a riot, and sometimes both. In this account, Paul has been hauled before the city council in Athens, a city much like many Greek places of the day, steeped in learning, art, drama, and civic democracy fiercely defended. To say it was a culture much like the American mind's profile would not be stretching the point. Paul was before the council because he was preaching the gospel. His uncompromising approach to evangelizing was threatening to those who didn't like change. (laughs) Big surprise there. Athens had religion like a rash. With so many gods, you needed a catalog with commentary to understand faith in their culture. They even had, as Paul pointed out, a statue to the unknown god. And the apostle seized on that to tell them of the unseen true God. He recounted the facts of creation, God's gracious providence and sovereignty in the space of a two-minute survey of Genesis and the historical presence of the divine. But when the apostle got to the resurrection, it broke the floodgates of unbelief. That day, some who listened simply rejected Paul's testimony out of hand. They huffed in derision of this madman's delusion. Others weren't quite convinced, but were willing to hear more later. Still others, a few, believed and joined with Paul to explore their newfound faith. The bottom line about sharing your faith so others can know about Jesus always has these three possibilities. A riot of unbelief, awakening of possibilities for belief, or conversion the revival of a soul that was lost and is now found. For you today, as you go about your task of living today, walking with Jesus, led by the Spirit, be aware of the opportunities that await your engagement. It isn't about bringing back scalps to nail to the church membership role. It's all about an eternity of joy and peace and love in the Holy Spirit that you are called to model. Your witness... It's confusing sometimes, valuable always. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.